Hi, my name's Sam, and behind me is the Hawkeye House. It's a geodesic dome situated on 110 acres. This video is sponsored by Noted. Bring your notes and audio together with the Noted app available on all of your Apple devices. Click the link in the description and get a seven day free trial of Noted Plus and try out their excellent features. I always say that I was raised an intellectual Jewish kid from Los Angeles and I turned out to be a construction worker in the countryside. No offense to construction worker, that's probably the preferable thing. I actually was uh, in technology at a company called Park Me that uh, I started in 2009. We sold in 2016. After that, I was thinking about starting another company, but I came across this property through a friend, actually. I immediately bought it because I fell in love with it, and my life since then has been working and learning about construction and building and off-grid. The entire property, I believe, I bought it for $350,000 and change, which came with a structure, albeit very uh, run down. I think it, was, it had been abandoned for about 10 years before we got here. All the copper wire was stripped out. There was graffiti, um, no windows really. I completely gutted it and uh, remodeled it. And now it's a rental and a place that I visit quite often. So this is the Hawkeye House. It's a geodesic dome built in maybe 1980 or so. As you can see, this isn't a true dome in the sense that there's pieces that have been cut out. So you have doors and uh, windows. Most of the segments are made up of five different triangles. One, two, three, four, five. The dome has five sides and I've made three of them different doors to really keep it open and sort of an indoor outdoor vibe as much as possible. A lot of people in the desert will paint things the color of the desert, they want it to blend in. And so they choose a gray or a brown or a beige. But I thought that was one boring and two, if you actually look at the desert, there's tons of colors. There's tons of details. It's actually these purple cactuses. They're really cool. I was like, why not try to match the dome to that part of the desert? This is a four ton air conditioner, probably bigger than we need. This is the chimney of the furnace that warms up in the winter. The high desert specifically has pretty extreme temperatures. Uh, it will snow in the winter sometimes, and it gets very hot in the summer. You need to really understand how you're gonna heat and cool the place. Over here, we created some landscaping. We use railroad ties. We can go over here and we can check out the hot tub. Built this myself, ordered the wood and put it together myself to be more specific. It's a great experience to be in here at night with the stars and the view and, and no one around. This is our outdoor fireplace. It's nice to get out of the jacuzzi at a hot tub and then sit on these day beds and be next to the fire at night. These I built with the help of some friends. There's one patch that is missing concrete and actually that was because there's a septic tank under here. In order to pump the septic tank, you need to be able to get into it and we don't want to have to break the concrete each time. Uh, we'll probably do some more planting here uh, with some planters and things to cover it up. This is the dining area, a little shade structure. Wanted to put it on a wood deck here that's over the concrete to sort of break up the concrete a bit. The water heater closet, electrical closet. And this is a normal 40 gallon propane water heater. I may go tankless soon. As you see, the geodesic dome roof comes down pretty low. We had to buy a skylight to make it work because a normal window wouldn't function the way we wanted it as part of the roof, as it were. This carport was not here. In order to get your certificate of occupancy, the town requires that there be covered parking. I also needed it though to have a flat area to put solar panels. There's five to six kilowatt hours of solar panels on top of that. We also have a ground mounted system, nine panels. The panels on top of the roof get a different angle, so we sort of have it covered throughout the day. This is the solar room where the batteries are housed two batteries. Each of them are 10 kilowatt hours. This is a Outback power inverter, eight kilowatts, three different charge controllers, each 80 amps, you know, arc fault protected, ground fault protected. This is a sub panel that goes to the house and Wi-Fi and a remote system so we can access it. We can turn it on, turn it off. We can power the generator. 
This is a 20 kilowatt generator. This will kick on if the batteries are below a certain voltage. So if the batteries are sort of depleted to some degree, this will kick on. Uh, this is a 500 gallon propane tank. Basically powers the generator and all the appliances that need gas. Welcome to the inside of the Hawkeye house. When I bought the place, it did not look anything like this. This big open space was not a big open space. It was walled off tremendously. It had a second level, it had many smaller rooms. My first instinct was we just gotta open the whole thing up. My good friend, Julia, helped me design all of the interiors. We wanted it to be funky, desert, modern. I mean, she has to describe it. She's much better at describing it, but we think we've, we've done that. Most of the furniture actually, including these couches, are vintage. Sort of gives that a sort of modern, sectional, funky look to it. This is reclaimed live edge wood. We got it at a flea market, we put feet on it. As you can see, we sort of mixed sheepskin with cowhide rug. I really love them. I'm from uh, Los Angeles and uh, surfing is a big part of the culture. This is a mirrored surfboard put on simple cinder blocks. It's actually not supposed to be a table. It's supposed to be just a mirror that you stand up, but we thought it would be cool as a table. All the wood is birch. Uh, we wanted to keep it light. Relatively easy wood to come by. Really good woodworkers that helped me out with this. The post, this is clad in birch, uh, Douglas fir post though. We can come into the kitchen. You'll see concrete countertops. And interesting details, this actually right here is this is steel. It's framed and formed by steel and then concrete on the inside. The cabinetry, all slow closed drawers. You know, we wanted to keep it light, painted it white. These appliances are specific for off-grid. The company is called Unique. This one runs on gas, but it's very efficient. Flush mount sink, water filter, and this water comes directly from our well. Very clean and, and good water, but we, we still filter it out. Under counter fridges, so guests and myself do like to have large fridges, but I wanted to make sure that we were under our power allotment. This is a butcher block. It's actually teak. Nice stools for if you want to have a coffee here. This photo I always got a kick out of. So this is the bathroom. Wanted to keep it very simple. Don't have a bathtub because of water conservation. We are off grid, so just a shower. This is concrete, ordered this off of Etsy. Fixtures are Kohler, gold Kohler, mirror to match. Then very simple shower. This is stucco concrete and then just open glass. A skylight window, you can open it up, get some fresh air. This is one of the bedrooms. We wanted to keep this very simple. We have a platform bed, a couple nightstands, a dresser, and that's about it. Spiral staircase, you want to conserve as much space as possible and a spiral staircase does that. Up here, first thing you'll notice is the wood floors. These are oak. And there's actually two beds up here. One platform bed here, and then one bed we made that's sort of a window nook, one of my favorite places to be. And it's all clad with, again, birch. And then a nice little area to hang out and lounge. These are steel tubes. We cladded it with birch. To pass code, there has to be no more than a four and a half inch gap between each rail. We were gonna do just birch, turned out not to be strong enough, so we actually had to weld steel underneath it. One of the things we did keep was this skylight. We replaced all the windows and then we put the nice birch woodwork around it. It can let a lot of heat in in the summer. So the windows are very thick, double paned, it has low E coating on it so that it sort of reduces the solar gain and also, it has a nice balcony out here as well. Morning coffee is great. The wood is Ipe wood. It comes from South America. It's very hard wood and holds up to the elements pretty well. We had to sort of get a custom door. Doors are expensive, so actually we built this. Made out of, I believe, dug fur and then framed here with steel. We welded this, bought the glass, put it, put it all together. Off-grid is hard, specifically off-grid with regards to power, because only sort of recently has power gotten to the place where it's efficient enough and cost-effective such that you can really 
do good things, you can run AC, you can sort of act as if you were on grid. But it's not easy to do it right. Either you hire a contractor that knows it and it becomes very expensive or you have to learn a lot about it and figure it out yourself a bit. But you get to be in land where otherwise it would be hard to build. It's secluded, you don't have any neighbors. It's beautiful, the views are great, but it's hard to get to. I do have advice for folks that want to transition. I try to be dispassionate about my beliefs so that if you're going down a path in a design and you really believe it's the right thing, but then something changes, you're not so caught up in it. You sort of, the process is really what it, what's important and um, not, not the sort of end goal, uh, as, as cliche as that may sound. Hang on for just a moment. I would like to tell you about this revolutionary note-taking app, Noted. Noted is the app that meets all of your note-taking needs. It is jam-packed with all sorts of features that makes taking notes easy. Let's say you're talking to somebody and they're giving you a lot of great information. You can open up Noted and start recording audio and start taking notes as you're recording. While you're taking those notes, those notes will appear with Noted's unique timestamp feature to level up your note-taking experience. You can also import audio or video and take notes directly from a video or a movie. Add a hashtag time tag to the best moments and you can instantly revisit them later. You can write video scripts, stories, and ideas on the go with dictation and write down exactly what comes to mind. Noted is available across all of your devices, iPhone, iPad, Apple Watch, and Mac, and syncs your notes seamlessly. Noted aims to serve a diverse audience, including those with accessibility needs. Noted has been featured by Apple as one of the best apps for productivity. Click the link in the description and get a Noted Plus subscription with a seven day free trial on unlimited devices and it is family sharing too. Click the link and check it out today. Thank you for watching. Have a great week.